philosophy and approach to bread and butter rock fishing is very much like my take on surf fishing. I like to fish a bit lighter than most people and I like to keep my gear as simple as possible and stay mobile. So all I carry is a bucket that holds my burly and bait on the way in and hopefully the catch on the way out. A nice comfortable backpack with my tackle in it. I've got a bait bucket on my belt so that I've got my bait at my fingertips all the time when I'm fishing. And sometimes I'll just take one rod, but today I've got two light rods. They're both about 10 and a half feet long, but they're very light with 3,000 size reels on them, 10 pound braid, fantastic fun. I've got a lure on one and a hook and sinker on the other for some bait fishing. Oh, and of course, I'm wearing an inflatable PFD or life jacket, just in case the worst happens and I end up in the water. That shouldn't happen if you keep an eye on the sea at all times. Looks good here, so I'm gonna go and give it a crack. There are rocky headlands like this right around the southern half of Australia and they all provide fishing opportunities when conditions are right. Safety should always be your first consideration, so check the sea conditions. The first hour of light is often a prime time on the ocean rocks, especially when throwing a lure for pelagic species such as salmon, tailor, kingfish and tuna. Although I'm primarily here to bait fish, I can't resist having a quick spin first. I'm using a metal lure and I cast this well out and let it sink. I know the bottom's sandy out wider so I'm not too worried about snagging up. Then I commence a quick retrieve, bouncing the rod tip to enhance the lure's action. And bingo, I'm on straight away. It's not a huge fish, but it's pretty lively and on this light gear, loads of fun. I keep the rod high to soak up the fish's lunges, runs and head shakes and do my best to steer it away from any shallow areas of reef and patches of kelp. This is where a longer rod definitely comes in handy. I'm also thinking about where I might be able to use the wave action to wash the fish up if it's too heavy to lift. And of course I've got one eye on those swells at all times. Fortunately it's small enough for a straight lift so I swing it up. Success and not a bad start to the day. That's why I always like to have a bit of a spin before I start bait fishing. Nice chunky little Australian salmon there and I think there's a few out there. Might have a few more casts with the lure before I put some burley in and start bait fishing. There's heaps of fish food in the aerated wash zones and one of the best ways to concentrate the action is to burly. Soak some stale bread in seawater and toss it in at your feet so that the wave action can disperse it. I like fairly soft baits such as kungivoi, saltwater yabbies or pounded squid pieces. However, peeled prawns are hard to beat, but make sure you protect our biosecurity by using Aussie prawns, avoid the imported ones. I peel my prawns as they seem to tempt more fish that way. Toss the scraps in for burley. A big prawn like this will produce a couple of tempting baits. I'm feeding the peeled prawn piece onto an octopus or suicide pattern hook, something in the number 2 to 2 size range is ideal, depending on what you're targeting. Push the top of the bait right up over the hook eye and knot to help secure it. My favourite rock rig's a dead simple one, the smallest sinker I can get by with running right down the leader to the hook. This is in keeping with my lightweight, mobile and simplified approach to rock fishing, and you'll get less snags too. A big mistake many people make is to cast out too far. Think about where your burley's working its magic and simply lob your baited rig into that zone. Most days you won't have to wait too long for a bite. You won't pin them all, but eventually you'll come up tight and when you do, use that long rod to steer your opponent away from the reef and kelp and either wash it up by taking advantage of some wave action or, if it's small enough, simply lift it and swing it out. Gotcha! So this is what I'm after. Black drummer, also known as rock blackfish. This one 
is not quite legal. They've got to be, oh, well, he might be. They've got to be 30 centimeters, but I'm going to let him go anyway. He's about the 30 centimeter mark, but it shows that I'm in the right spot. And the little bit of burley that I put in has started to work. Let's see if we can get a decent one. Below the tide's falling now, the swell's actually picking up a little, with distinct sets of larger waves coming through periodically. It really pays to keep your eye on these and to stay on the ball. It's not just the sea that's getting bigger either. My next hookup feels like a better fish than the first two little drummer. It's arcing hard to my right and shaking its head as it thumps and runs. It's quite a handful on the light gear, and it also turns out to be something of a surprise package. Well, you never know what you're going to catch off the rocks. I swapped over to a Paternoster rig with the sinker on the bottom and a little dropper. This is a fair bit of kelp here, and I was getting snagged up a little bit. And I've pulled this. It's a sea sweep. Now these are a southern species, quite common in Victoria and South Australia, southern end of Western Australia, but I've never actually caught one here on the south coast of New South Wales before. They're quite separate and distinct to our common sweep that we get in this part of the world, much more heavily built. A little bit of yellow around the mouth here and a couple of bands, and apparently they're pretty good chewing, so I might keep this one. I haven't exactly set the world on fire, but I've caught a feed, had a ball, and I'm heading home safe and sound. You couldn't really ask for much more from a morning on the rocks.